Well, hi there. Snakes are awesome. I think part of their appeal is that many people think that they're dangerous and scary. But to be honest, most of the snakes that we keep in captivity, like this boa, are completely harmless. And that's a very good thing. But there are a few that are genuinely dangerous. These are snakes that are highly venomous or that are large enough to overpower and in some cases even consume a human. And these snakes, these dangerous snakes, are widely considered the most awesome of them all. These are the snakes that everyone knows, even people that have no interest in reptiles. Snakes like coral snakes, anacondas, cobras, reticulated pythons, and rattlesnakes. And some people take on the risk and the responsibility of keeping these snakes simply because they're so awesome. We've covered many of these snakes in the past on this channel, and unfortunately, most of them make terrible pets for the majority of keepers. I myself don't keep snakes with medically significant venom or that get large enough to consider a human as a potential meal. That said, I do keep a number of snakes that most people cannot distinguish from the dangerous snakes that I've mentioned before. Snakes that have never killed anyone, and yet I have to spend time explaining to people that there is a difference between what I have and what they think it is. So let's talk about five deadly pet snakes, how deadly they really are, and 10 non-deadly alternatives that most people will think are danja, danja, danja. First on our list is a deadly snake that people and predators can identify in a heartbeat, the coral snake. Coral snakes are notorious for their bright, aposematic coloration, particularly red, black, and yellow bands. Aposematic coloration means danger, and these are dangerous. They are lapid snakes like cobras and mambas. They have a pair of fixed fangs at the front of their mouth connected to venom glands that will inject a powerful neurotoxin into prey and, potentially, into you. That said, they're shy snakes that don't encounter humans often, and they're very reluctant to bite. Additionally, they're small, with short fixed fangs, so they often do not penetrate clothing when they do bite. Antivenin is available, and they account for very few bites, and fatalities are extremely rare, unless you do not seek medical attention. That said, they are dangerous. Their predators have been selected upon for thousands of generations to avoid snakes with discoloration. As a result, and we have an entire video about this, there are many snakes that have benefited from looking, at least to some degree, like coral snakes. That would include milk snakes, like Marlin here, and the mountain king snakes. These are some of the most precise coral snake mimics in the world. Most people that come into Clint's Reptile Room here in Springville, Utah, think that my milk snake, Marlin, is a dangerous coral snake. The only reason that they leave knowing that he isn't is because I explained to them that he isn't. And it's a good thing too, because he, Marlin here, is one of the three snakes in this room that has bitten me. The other two are on this list as well, so it's a good thing they're not the real deal. Next on our list is the heaviest snake in the world, and probably the most infamous snake that isn't venomous, the green anaconda. Though it is difficult to verify exactly how large they can get, they verifiably get close to 20 feet and over 200 pounds. 200 pounds is a lot of snake under any circumstances, but this group of snakes is also disproportionately strong for its length. A 200 pound anaconda could easily overpower and kill a 200 pound person. I once had a discussion with my brother-in-law about how he would carry a boot knife in the Amazon in case he were attacked by an anaconda. I asked him if he'd seen many large snakes wrap prey, and he hadn't. But he spent the next week or so going down that YouTube rabbit hole. In the end, we concluded that you could have your knife in your hand and it still probably wouldn't be able to save you. That said, very few, if any, people have verifiably been killed by green anacondas in the wild, and I can find no evidence of anyone ever being killed by a captive green anaconda. There's also no record of a green anaconda successfully swallowing a person, for the reasons we outlined in this video. But they do have the capability to kill a person. It could happen. They are notoriously cantankerous, and their teeth are large enough to do some damage even if they don't wrap and constrict you afterward. But there are some great alternatives. One are the rainbow boas. 
Depending on which phylogeny you examine, rainbow boas are either small anacondas or anacondas are big rainbow boas. They have the same basic body structure. They definitely have the same freakish strength. However, I generally have to explain to people that these are anacondas. I don't need to explain how they're different. But this is a yellow anaconda. And she might bite me today, as we're still socializing her, and these are not notoriously nice. That said, when people ask me the same question they ask whenever I get out a big snake, is that an anaconda? I just say, yes, yes it is. Most people don't know that there are five species of anacondas, not including the rainbow boas. And though this snake will stay considerably smaller than a green anaconda, she will be an impressively large snake when she grows up. I want to take just a moment to say thank you to our patrons at Patreon. You might notice that we have shown you a lot of videos we've done with amazing and dangerous snakes. And to do this, in a lot of cases, we had to travel across the country. And this has been possible due to the support of our patrons at Patreon. Thank you. And, and if you're interested in the cool content we have for our patrons or in just supporting the production of awesome content like this in the future on this channel, please consider checking it out. If you were to go out into the world and ask people to name a dangerous snake, I would bet money that the most commonly listed snake would be the cobra. And for good reason. Cobras are iconic with their awesome hoods and intimidating upright posture. And like coral snakes, they are highly venomous elapid snakes. Unlike coral snakes, they are estimated to have killed hundreds of thousands of people in the last few decades alone, mostly in India. They even account for a surprising number of deaths here in the United States, considering they're not even native or really present in the wild in the Americas. This genus may be the most dangerous to humans of any snake genus. And a while back, I was bitten by a snake with a hood and cobra in its name. Shelby, my false water cobra. And many people were certain that I was going to die. And the reality is that Shelby is venomous. But Shelby is a false water cobra. And it isn't the water that's false. He isn't a real cobra. They do look shockingly similar to a banded water cobra. They have a hood and a very cobra head. But they're not cobras or even a lapid snakes. They are South American colubrid snakes. They're rear fanged venomous, but they've never killed anybody. That said, most people hear venomous and they think it could kill you. So this is a hooded venomous snake that has cobra in its name and looks like a cobra. Much more so than the other false cobra, the Egyptian false cobra, which we will cover soon. But though this does look an awful lot like a banded water cobra, when I think cobra, I think an all black snake. And there is an all black snake that has an even more cobra vibe. And other than the king cobra, which isn't actually a cobra, I know of no non-cobra that resembles a cobra more than the eastern indigo snake. They are basically the king cobra of North America. Incredible snakes. And if you told the average person that it was a cobra, most of them would probably believe you. Next on our list is the only snake verified to have actually eaten a person. This is the longest snake in the world, the reticulated python. Like I said, these have not only killed people, but have successfully eaten them. And given that they get to be almost 30 feet long, that isn't so shocking. Snakes don't hunt people. Well, except for these. So unsurprisingly, these are very popular pet snakes. But honestly, they do make interesting and fantastic captives. Though the possibility is there, few if any people have been killed by captive reticulated pythons. But a bite can still cause considerable damage with long-lasting nerve and other tissue damage. And keeping a 20-plus foot snake has its challenges. But good news, that doesn't need to be the case. Retics are basically perfect, except for being way too big for most keepers. But on islands, there are populations of reticulated pythons that stay much, much smaller. These are known as the dwarf and super dwarf reticulated pythons. While these are not small snakes, this one's still very young, 
they are much, much smaller than their mainland counterparts. They are, in my opinion, right now, the best pet snakes that you can get. And they're reticulated pythons, so you can tell people that these are the longest snakes in the world, and they sometimes eat people without actually needing to keep the longest snake in the world that might eat you. Last on our list is a snake that to me, as someone that grew up in the United States, is the epitome of venomous snakes. The rattlesnake. I love them. They are absolutely awesome looking. I love that viper head, the pattern, the rattle. I love it all. To me, there is nothing else like them. And yet, many snakes from their range are often mistaken for them. One of the most common are snakes from the genus Pituophis, the gopher, bull, and pine snakes. Unfortunately, this means that they are often killed out of fear that they're rattlesnakes. And mind you, this is extra tragic because rattlesnakes rarely kill anyone. More people are killed in deer attacks than by rattlesnakes. Heck, they have a rattle to warn you that they don't want to fight you. But the reality is that these are often mistaken for rattlesnakes. In fact, Lee Sho was recently presenting Buttercup here to a bunch of elementary classes, and she asked them, what kind of snake is this? And they pretty much all shouted in unison, rattlesnake! And they do have a very rattlesnake pattern, defensive posture, and they rattle, despite not having a rattle for a tail. But I don't think they look nearly as much like rattlesnakes as these. This is a plains hognose. People often say it is a rattlesnake mimic, though I'm not sure I buy that. Rattlesnakes are not aposematically colored. They're cryptically colored. And I think these look like rattlesnakes because they live in the same places, so they have similar camouflage. That said, one of my friends found one recently flipping stuff here in Utah, and he was so excited until he remembered that we don't have hognose snakes here in Utah. It was a baby rattlesnake. And this is probably because they're built like rattlesnakes. Their color is like a rattlesnake. And an argument can be made that they're venomous. So when people ask you that question, you can say, yeah, as long as there are no toxicologists around to argue with you about it. And that rounds out five deadly pet snakes and 10 non-deadly alternatives. Which snakes would you add to this list? As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon.